teaching today, I'm calling it the way of an eagle because I want you to be an eagle Christian. And how to be an eagle Christian? It's in God's word. So I'm going to wait till you all come on. You are going to really enjoy today. You know, there's an old song. I shall not be, I shall not be moved, and neither shall you. I shall not be, I shall not be, be moved just like the trees that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. That's an old song, by the way. Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. I'm in his loving favor, I shall not be moved. You know, when I got saved, I learned all these songs years ago. All right, hello to Denise. God bless you and love you too. Thank you. Hello to Marcus. A big shalom from the UK and a big shalom to you too. Hello to Mill. Mill. Wow, what a beautiful name. Um, hello to Tapilo. And hello to the Oma from Liberia. Beautiful. I've never been to Liberia. I think one day I, I'll come. I'm sure I will. Hello to Fari. And hello to Samuel from Switzerland. I'm so happy we're going to all be in heaven together. I'm looking forward to being with you there. I really promise you that. Hello to Abby from Australia. That's my granddaughter's name, by the way, Abby. I love that name. Hello to Becky from Toronto, all the way from Toronto. It's a very special city for me, my dear, very special city. Because my mom and my dad chose to be buried in Toronto at Mount Pleasant Cemetery. It's a very special place for me. And plus, my sisters live there. So I like to go back and forth as much as I can. Hello to Maria. And hello to Karish. Kesh? Karishikesh. Wow, what a, what a name. Hello to Lara and U, Ujvari from Hungary. Lorenzo. Listen, I'm going to start teaching in just a few moments. I'm just going to wait till all the sweet people come on and tell your friends we are on. And by the way, let me know, what is the best time for you? Yesterday, I came on about two hours early. So if that works better for you, just send me an email, pastorbennybennyhin.org. That's my email. I look at it all the time, pastorbennybennyhin.org. So, because I could come earlier. I am going to be in Florida in a few weeks, and then I'm going to probably uh, do, uh, do it earlier from there. And I'll tell you some other things happening that I think are very exciting for me. Anyways, hello to Christina from Ontario, and Rosemary from London, Isaac, God bless you, from British Columbia, Vancouver. It's a beautiful place there, my goodness. Now, while you're coming on, Monday, June 15, at 3 p.m. West Coast time, 6 p.m. on the East Coast, I begin my first school live class on Zoom. That's our institute. I launched an institute we call the Benin Institute, where I'll be teaching live, plus others will teach with me, and eventually we'll, we'll, we'll probably be on every day with class. Not myself, but others are going to help me, and this will all be on Zoom to begin with, to begin with. The Institute, of course, is on. It's called Benhin Institute. It's already online. You can go visit Benhin Institute online. Just go to benhininstitute.org. And we have archives of every preacher you can imagine that God has used in the past and still in the present. But most of them are in glory. And hundreds, if not thousands of hours of Catherine Kuhlman, Amy Semple McPherson, Derek Prince, Lester Semerall, oh, keep going. So many, so many, so many. And you, you, you will enjoy the archives that we've gathered over the last 45 years of my life. 
So you can join the Institute for 25 a month. You can be a part of the live classes, plus have access to the archives. Or if you just want the archives, that's $10 a month. But anyway, that begins on Monday, the 15th. Please join me on Zoom. You can send me an email today. We'll send you a response if you're interested. And that is pastorbenny at bennyhin.org. And don't forget the healing service, Friday the 19th. Another big healing service. This last one was incredible. So the next one is the 19th, June 19th at 1 p.m. West Coast, which is 4 p.m. on the East Coast. Father, I pray you bless your people richly today, Lord, as they hear your blessed word. Blessed be your name forever. And God's people said, Amen. And to Jesus be the glory. I love the Lord. I tell you, I really adore Jesus. And I know you do too. I just want you to know, the closer you get to him, the more joy in your life, the more peace in your life. I promise you. Neglect has a high price. Anyways, how to be an eagle believer and fulfill your ministry. Because you can't really fulfill your ministry without being an eagle Christian. Now, let's, let's talk about that. When you look at nature, when you look at life, and especially when you look at the Word of God, you become increasingly aware that God, that God Almighty uses every means possible to communicate His truth with us, including through creation. So, um, God Almighty, you know, I'll just give you an, an, an example. God Almighty made the creatures of the earth to be a lesson of, I believe, some of his acts of power and eternal truth. When you, when you think about the eagle, there's so much in the life of an eagle, the animal, the bird, the eagle, that has to do with revelation of who God is and how he operates with us as children, the way he treats us, the way he, he causes us to grow. So today, we're going to have a, a revelation. This is not going to be a study in nature, by, by the way. It's going to be a revelation of who God is to us and who we are to him and the way he deals with us. So let's first look at Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of of the world are clearly seen. So the creation of the world reveals the invisible majesty of God and the invisible power of God being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Do you know that the Godhead is revealed through creation? The Trinity is revealed through creation. Everything you look at reveals God. Let's look at a tree. A tree is, is a trinity. Because you have the tree, the branches, uh, and then the leaves. That's a trinity. So, so you, you're a trinity, spiritual body. But everything you look at in the world, there's a trinity everywhere, everywhere as you look at creation. So uh, look at the sun, you know. You have the sun then you have the light, then you have the heat that comes from it. That's a trinity. I always say, if you want to understand God, look, look at the sun. God the Father is just like the sun, uh, that the planet, the sun. Jesus is the light, and the Holy Ghost is the heat. <laughs> That's what we feel in our body. So God's amazing creation is a revelation to us. And today we are going to look at the eagle. So, let's look also at Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 30, and I'm going to read verse 18, and please share this with your friend, because it's, it's going to be a real blessing to you and to them. Here's what it says in verse 18. 
there be three things which are too wonderful for me. And I'm going to read verse 18 and 19. There are three things which are too wonderful for me, God says. Yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent upon a rock. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. And the way of a man with a maid. Quite amazing. One day I'll teach on all these four. But let's deal with the eagle in the air. So God says there are three things which are wonderful. One of them is the way the eagle takes care of its eaglets and how it raises its little ones. So let's look at Deuteronomy. And this is where we begin our teaching. Deuteronomy 32. There's a lot in the Bible about the eagle, by the way. Uh, Verse 11. And I want you to begin to see yourself as an eagle believer. Because the eagle is made for heaven and heaven is made for the eagle. Can I say that again? The eagle is made for heaven. It mounts with wings so mighty. It knows the current of the winds. The eagle is for the heavens. So are we. We are heavenly people. Now, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 32, 11, as an eagle stirs up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord, so the Lord. So we have here a way to understand God. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. But I love the word, so the Lord, because when you read verse 11, it says, as an eagle stirs up her nest, number one. Two, flutters over her young. Three, spreads abroad her wings. Four, takes them her young, and bears them on her wings. So I'll explain. Now, think about the eaglets. And I want to say something before I talk about that. I think it's so important I mention something here. I think uh, for a long time, the enemy had us believing the lie that we're not supposed to walk as masters of devils. I want you to say something. I'm a devil's master. Say it. I am a what? Devil's master. But the devil wants us to believe the lie that we're not masters of devils, nor are we masters of sin, but we are, nor are we masters of our passions, yet we are, The devil wants us to believe we're not masters of our appetite, yet we are. And we're not masters of the world, yet we are. The enemy wants you to believe you're not a master of devils or sin or passions or appetites or the world. Yet the Bible tells us we are masters in this world. When you look at Romans, let's look at Romans because I want you to get this. Romans chapter 5, because that's what the eagle is all about. It masters the wings of the heavens. It masters way more than just that. An eagle is a master, absolutely. Now, look what it says in verse 17. I'm reading... Romans 5. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus the Christ. Wow, I love it. So we reign in life by the Lord Jesus. 
Adam caused people to be servants. It says, for by one man's offense, death reigned. So humanity became a servant of death. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Jesus Christ. So we are uh, like the eagle. There's, there's two kinds of eagles in Israel. There's the imperial eagle and the golden eagle. The imperial eagle speaks of the Christian, the king of birds. The golden eagle speaks of the nature of God in the Bible. I want, I want, I want to repeat that. The imperial eagle in the Holy Land is a symbol of believers who are kings in life. While the golden eagle speaks of God's nature. So let's become now the eagles we ought to be, the imperial eagles, the kingly eagles, the ones who reign. Now, amazingly, we have the nature of both eagles in us as believers. Not only the imperial eagle, but the golden eagle. Because both are in us. We are kings and we have God's nature. Hallelujah. So, so let's, let's rise up and take our duty. Let's rise up and become who we are. But let's learn the way of the Lord. So, we're going to go back to Deut the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 11. Love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As an eagle stirs up her nest. Wow. <laughs> As the eagle breaks up her nest. Now think about this. Here are the eaglets born in a magnificent nest. Here are the eaglets high on mountains, soft in some blessed, tender home. I mean, think, think about the nests that the eagles build for their little ones on some high mountain. The nest is beautiful and soft. The nest is a blessed, tender home. And now the eaglets daily are fed with the choicest of meat. No work just sleep and eat. That's what you call revival, don't you? <laughs> and one day, the mama eagle shows, shows up and no food. There's no food. Instead, there's a stern look. And she's staring at those little eaglets. And she starts to tear that nest apart. That's what it means, stirs up the nest. So now for months and months, those eaglets have been in pure comfort in a beautiful nest on some mountain, having luxury food delivered by mama, the choices of meat. And one day mama shows up and there's no meat to feed the little ones. Instead, there's a look of, okay, boys and girls, it's time to fly. And she begins to tear that nest apart. She begins to tear the comfort apart. She begins to tear the home they've been living in apart. And all they're left with is sticks and discomfort. Now you hear me. God is more interested in our character than in our comfort. When you were saved, you were just like those eaglets. When I was saved, just like those eaglets, we had such comfort. God put us on a high mountain in a beautiful nest and brought us daily meat. And we thought this is a revival. And one day God shows up and says, boys, it's time to fly. <laughs> and what do we do? We're wondering, dear God, I'm going to die. <laughs> Because God begins to tear our comfort apart. 
that's happened to you and it's happened to me. And if it hasn't happened to you, you haven't grown up yet. It doesn't say in the Bible if. It says when you go through the fire, when you go through the flood, when, not if. In other words, if you haven't gone through fire and water and storms and challenges, you haven't lived yet. Troubles and tribulations mean God is tearing up the nest so you can fly on your own. Hallelujah. Now, listen, listen, listen. The, the poor eaglets, these eaglets are probably saying, Mama has gone mad. She's lost her mind. <laughs> no more, Mom. Don't tear us up. <laughs> nest and just hovers over those little eaglets. That's what it says. Flutters over her young. You know what she's saying to him? Look at my wings. And by looking at my wings, discover your own. <laughs> Look at your wings, boys. Look at your wings, girls. Look at your wings, saints, that you didn't know you had because those eaglets have not paid attention to those wings. They've been enjoying the meat and the comfort, the beauty of home and loveliness and revival. And now the revival is over. The problems begin. Mom is staring <laughs> that nest to smithereen. And now after all the trouble comes and everything is torn up and those poor eaglets are looking up like wondering, am I going to die? She starts to flutter those wings. She starts to say, I'm hovering over you. I'm hovering over you. She spreads abroad her wings. I'm reading from the scripture. Deuteronomy 32, 11. As an eagle stirs up her nest, she tears it up. Number two, flutters over her young and spreads her wings as far as they can go. She's, she's hovering and she's spreading her wings. And when she's spreading her wings, what she's saying to the little ones is, discover your own. You have the same wings. My wings and your wings are the same wings. That's what God is telling us. My wings and your wings are the same. I have given you my wings. Start to use them. But something else happens. What she's showing them really is her power. By showing her wings, she's showing her power. And she's also saying, that same power is yours. Because wings are power. Now she does something else. It says she spreads her wings and takes them. Bears them on her wings. Well, before she does that, a, a, an eaglet starts, or an eagle starts to force them out of that little area that had been home. So the eagle now begins to push them out one at a time. So think about yourself. You're in a beautiful comfort zone. Everything is marvelous. A revival is on. God shows up. He starts to tear up all your comfort because he wants to build your character. And next thing you know, he's showing you his wings and power that you must discover yours. And he starts pushing you out of your comfort. And now you're diving. You're, in, <laughs> you're screaming, ah, about to die. And you know what the wing, and you know what the eagle does? It comes with such speed and picks up that eaglet way back up again and throws it down again. 
So one by one now, the little eaglets are being pushed out. And now the eaglets are diving, thinking, this is, this is it, I'm going to die. Listen here, I'm going to say something to you. In death, you find life. In dying, he picks you right up again. When you think it's all over, he picks you up again. He's teaching you how to fly. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You're an eagle. But how does the eagle train our eaglets? I'm just showing it to you. Tears up the nest, takes away the comfort, shows those little eaglets the wings and the power. So it says, come on, notice your own. And number three, one by one, the eagle pushes those little kids or eaglets out. And now they're diving, thinking, this is it. I'm going to die. <laughs> now when, when the eaglet says, I'm bound for certain death, the next thing you know is mom shows up out of nowhere and picks them right up on her wings and goes right back up and drops them again. That's what it means by bears them on her wings. Well, she can't bear them on her wings un until she pushes them out of the nest. So the Lord, wow. So now she picks them up on her wings, and the process, they say, goes to four, five, maybe six times. Before that little eaglet gets the message, that mom has taken her up, and she throws them down four to five times, sometimes more. And finally, the eaglet says, Mama is trying to teach me something. Mama is trying to tell me something. How many times has that happened to you? Sarah, are you thinking about the times God has done that with you? You want to you wanna say something? So I can hear you there talk, talk, talking to me? Yeah. Think about the times, all of you, including Chad here, who's helping me taping all this. Think about how many times a trial comes, and then it stops, you, oh, everything is okay now, and then it, another one hits you. God wants you to fly. It's time you use your wings that you already have. It's time you use what God has given you that you can reign in life. How many times must he teach us? So what are trials? I just told you. They're tearing. Trials tear the nest. It's God who's doing it. Shows you his power. Flutters his wings and so much more because he wants us to grow up and fly. Now, we cannot grow up until God pulls away. God Almighty pulls away from us, slowly, just like the eagle. God stops giving us that delicious meat he's been bringing every day to our comfort, to our nest of comfort. We don't have miraculous supports anymore. Now we have to do what is right. So God would, pulls away slowly. Many of those miracles, many of the supports that you think are necessary, well, not anymore. They are necessary at your beginning, but not as you grow. You cannot grow if comfort continues. We cannot grow if God does not stir up that nest and take us out of our comfort zone. We can't grow because growth happens in the valley, not on the mountain. Would you please say something after me, all of you? I'm an eagle made for heaven. Say it again. I'm an eagle made for heaven. I want to see you write it on your, on your comments. I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle made for heaven. I love it here. It says, trials take the nest. Yeah, you got it. So, I'm an eagle made for heaven because 
What the eagle wants is to teach those eaglets they can take over the heavens and fly. They can rule in the heavenlies. That's where they, that's where they live. That's where they rule. So in the struggle, the little eaglets build that necessary muscle. So when, watch this, watch this. When that eagle drops them, and now they're diving, thinking they're going to die, they're discovering their wings, they're discovering their ability, they're discovering their muscles, while thinking they're going to die and smash their head and be, be gone. Now the mommy comes and picks them back up again, and they dive again because she throws them again, and now they're, they're discovering their strength. We discover our strength when we are diving, not when we are flying. Oh, no, no, you missed what I said. Chad, did you hear what I said? We discover our strength in trials, not in victories. We discover our strength in challenges, not in victories. Victories are comforts. Every trial. Through it all, you remember that old song? Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all. Andrew Crouch wrote that song. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Many years of tears and sorrows. Many questions about tomorrow. Yet in all this time, I didn't even know time from wrong. I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation... God gave blessed consolation that these trials come to make me strong. Andrew Crouch wrote that song. You should look it up and listen to it. So we become strong in trials, not in victories. Victories are comforts, like that beautiful nest God brings you to meet, you know. But these happen only, they only happen when we start living the Christian life. But later now it's time to fly. It's time to grow. It's time to live. It's time to, to develop. So, the eagle is made for heaven, and so are you. And please say it again, I'm an eagle made for heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what is God doing when, he, when he's doing all this? He's tearing up the nest. He's showing you his wings and power. He begins to spread his wings. He begins to push you out of your nest. And you start diving down, thinking you're going to die, and then... That eagle comes and picks you up. God comes and picks you up. And then you learn how to fly. What is he trying to do? He's trying to do one thing. Please. Yes. He's preparing you for your destiny. Through difficulties and trials. God prepares us for our destinies. You know, people talk about destiny a lot. But no, no, nobody says it's trials that prepare us for destinies. Do you know how many trials I've gone through in my lifetime already of 45 years of ministry? A truckload of trials. A truckload of challenges in my life. Lied about, deceived, defrauded, you name it, it ha it's happened to me. When I went through my divorce, people made up their own stories. The pain of those years have made me stronger today. I didn't think so back then. Trials make you strong, and trials reveal to you your destiny, and trials prepare you for your destiny. All the trials are is what I'm reading. Deuteronomy 32, 11. And when you're ready, things begin to change. That's when Isaiah 40, 31 happens. You begin to wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How? In trials. And then they'll mount up with wings as eagles. What you don't know is before you can mount up, he's been dropping you a few times. <laughs> You can't mount up till you're down somewhere. I mean, you can't mount up if you're up. You only mount up if you're down. And then it says they'll run and not be weary, walk and not faint. You start catching up with, with what God wants for your life. 
Now, let me just say a few things and I'm done, okay? For today, for today. You see, that eagle now, once it starts to mount up, it learns the current of the winds. You cannot learn the current of the winds till you're dropping first into that wind and seeing the force of it. And then you realize once you start flying, hey, there's power in this wind here. And you learn the currents of the wind. And when that eaglet becomes an eagle, it stands upon a rock. That's the word of God. And waits for the current of the winds to be strong enough to surrender her wings to that wind. That's the Holy Ghost. That eagle knows the current of the winds. But she did not discover those currents with, without drop up, up, down, up, down, up, down. When mommy comes and picks her up and then she drops her again. The current of the winds, the ways of the spirit are learned through trials and tribulations. Not in a nest up there where everything is comfy. Tomorrow I'm going to continue. Because I'm going to talk to you about how, you know the enemy of an eagle? What is the enemy, the number one enemy of an eagle? Would you like to know? Would you like to know? A snake. Because the snake comes into the nest. And tomorrow I'm going to talk to you on how the eagle defeats it. <laughs> Who's our enemy? The devil. What is he? A snake. The eagle does two things with that snake to destroy it. I'll talk about that tomorrow. I'll continue tomorrow. I have a lot to talk to you about, about the way of an eagle. Hallelujah. So are you going through some trial? It's okay. You'll climb back up again. You'll fly high again. I want to pray for you. Come on. Father, every trial, every problem, let them become strong in it. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus, your son. I give you praise, Lord. Now listen, listen, I want to pray with you. So I'm not leaving you yet. Just give me a few minutes. I want to pray with you because I really feel, I really feel God is in this. There's something precious happening right now. And I just want to play a beautiful worship song Jesus, name above all names. And as you listen, and as I pray, just receive your strength. In the name of Jesus, strengthen your people. Lord, let every trial be a lesson of strength. Let every challenge be a place of strength and power. Bring them out of it quickly, Lord, and pick them right back up again and teach them how to fly and reign in this life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive now in Jesus' name. I want to pray for your finances right now. I want to pray with you that God will bless your finances because God cares about that. Stretch your hands towards me. Come on, I'm believing God for you. In Jesus' name, Lord, meet every financial need. Let there be victory after victory after victory. Lord, if there's challenges now financially, they'll come to an end. We know it. Prosper your people. Bless your people. Increase them on every side. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Now listen to me. Giving is the way out of struggle financially. Giving is the way out of debt. Giving is the way out of dangers financially. There's only one way to come out. And God says, prove me 
now here where. The only time God says prove me is when it comes to money. Prove me now here with if I'll not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There'll not be room enough to receive it. And God promises, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. You know what the word devourer means? Seed eater. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. He'll not touch the fruit. He'll not touch your life. He'll not touch your finances. He'll not touch your family. You'll be a testimony for him. God will make you a testimony. All we have to do is obey the scriptures. Job 36, 11, if they obey and serve him, they'll spend their days in prosperity and years in pleasure. I've had many financial trials. But when I gave, financially gave, God blessed me. Can I tell you a quick story? I was in Jerusalem one time when I was going through a very serious lawsuit in my life and ministry. And my lawyer said, no hope. It's, it's, you're going to lose the case. I was in Israel praying at the wedding wall. I said, you go talk to the judge and ask if she can put a gag on that case. Because it was a serious lawsuit against our ministry. He said, there's no way. He said, that judge hates preachers. I said, Dennis, that was his name. I said, you go do your job and I'll do my job. In other words, you go talk to that judge and I'll talk to God. And I said, Lord, I'll sow 10,000 in your ministry and I'll give that 10,000 to the poor to help him. Get me out of that lawsuit. 45 minutes later, my phone rings when I'm in Israel. It's Dennis on the phone, the lawyer. He said, I, I don't know how you did this. He said, not only did the judge, a lady judge, grant your wish she he said she dropped the whole case is dismissed against you god gave me a miracle and we fought that thing for two years two years of war came to an end and i said lord i'll sow that seed in your word because see sowing seed is honoring the lord honor the lord with your substance as i've been telling you proverbs 3 makes it clear in chapter 9 and 10, in verse 9 and 10. So let's do it now. If you're going through a financial challenge, the only way out is sowing seed. No, no matter what the amount is, just believe God. Father, in Jesus' name, let that miracle come financially for your glory and honor. Amen. You can sow your seed right now by going to benihinministries.org, benihinministries.org. Or you can give on the platform you're watching me on if it's possible. Or just text it. BHM45777. That's BHM45777. And don't forget to join me Monday for our very first school class live on Zoom. For those of you that are a part of the Benihin Institute. If you're not a part, please join the Institute by going to Benihin Institute dot org online. Don't miss tomorrow. Love you much. Bye-bye.